December 21st, 2016. With this theory, I'm seeing how to compare and contrast what establishment takes as being real and what this theory says is true about the world. And in particular, their ideas of asteroids bringing life to Earth and then not actually understanding what would be happening on an asteroid to form life to begin with is at best haphazard reasoning and a very muddy understanding of what it means to form life. So I went ahead and made uh, some principles that follow from this main principle. It's called the bio biostellar evolution, which is just as uh, it just says here, as a star evolves, life forms and evolves on it. And I have written, this means the chemical precursors to life began forming on Earth when it was a much hotter, younger star. As the Earth began cooling down from more plasmatic and gaseous stages, the first amino acids and various other chemicals began forming in its atmosphere. And then from that I can branch off. I'll go ahead and read these out to you because I feel if somebody were to read this, it maybe it will go in a different way versus, you know, reading a textbook or looking at a visual. It's much different to have somebody read it to you. The first one is microbiological complexity. In stellar metamorphosis, the microbiology of the star increases in complexity as the star evolves. For example, it goes from ionized hydrogen to hydrogen gas, which is a diatomic molecule, to amino acids, DNA, to large proteins, to flagellum, to viruses, to microplasmatic bacteria, to red blood cells and rod-shaped bacteria, to the nucleus of white blood cells, to amoebae, amoeba, amoeba? <laughs> I don't know the plural for that, to the colonial alga, and then to louse and even the reproductive structures of bread molds. Now, that's not one becomes the other. I'm just saying it increases in complexity. All the while, the biological characteristics become more and more complex, leading up to much larger organisms comprised of trillions of symbiotic, pathogenic, and other types of microbiological structures. It should be noted that life itself rests on the structures and processes of the smallest of organisms. Therefore, as life is a byproduct of stellar evolution, according to the biostellar evolution principle, the, astro the astrochemical principle, the complexity principle of microbiology can be stated. The microbiology of a star increases in complexity as it evolves. It's pretty straightforward. Next thing I've written down here is photosynthesis. This is very important as well. All stars cool and synthesize photosynthetic molecules in their high atmospheres during late stages of their evolution. These late stage stars contain hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and magnesium in their high atmospheres as they are very light elements. They form in late stellar evolution in stars similar to Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, and Uranium. As Jupiter and Saturn evolve, they will become blue similar to Neptune or Uranium from an increased production of methane and other compounds and the latter will begin to have greener tints as photosynthetic bacteria synthesized in large amounts due to X-ray radiation and repeated mutation of the molecules on vast scales. These molecules will then be cycled through the turbulent reducing atmospheres, feeding a multitude of feedback loops required for the formation of life. The radicals needed to form chlorophyll, which is the base molecule for photosynthesis, are formed inside of evolving stars, not random asteroids or comets, where molecules do not have atmospheres to cycle through. The other principle is mobility. For life to form on any object, the molecules for life formation need to be able to move on vast scales. This means life evolves on objects which have large gaseous atmospheres, as that would provide the most motion, as opposed to solid or liquid objects. Life begins where large amounts of mixing, mixing can take place between molecules. It is much more probable that a star can form complex chemistry naturally when it can mix trillions of tons of matter in a giant blender-like configuration, as opposed to thinking that there is very little mixing. And think about it, how much mixing can Jupiter do versus the surface of a tiny little asteroid that has an atmosphere? The comparison is, hands down, it goes to Jupiter. And I have here... Life begins where the highest mobility from molecular interaction and mixing can take place. Volume. 
Also, life begins in areas where there is a vast volume present. The statistical probability will need to be calculated. I'm not very good with math. But the author is betting that objects have a higher chance of forming life if they, have more, if they are more voluminous. This is opposed to the surfaces of very small bodies. The likelihood of molecules mixing to form amino acids and various other proteins is vastly higher in a giant object such as Nep Neptune or Jupiter as opposed to the surface of a small asteroid. The differences are huge and we can have molecules mixing in a volume of tens of billions of kilometers of material or on a surface of a few hundred kilometers with the former being the most probable. So literally it all boils down to statistic probability. If you have something that forms on the surface versus a volume of hundred or tens of trillions of kilometers, the differences are you can't even compare the two. Life begins in objects which have, which have very large volumes, and probably should be down to billions because trillions is like way, way, way up there. I mean, that would be really early stages of stellar evolution. Gravity. La the third one is that life begins where the material can be stopped from escaping the body. This means there has to be a strong gravitational field to hold on to any newly formed molecules. It says here, life requires a significant gravitational field so that forming and formed molecules cannot escape. The gravitational pull of a small asteroid is not great enough to keep molecules which have formed in potentially explosive exothermic reactions because their escape velocity is quite low. If you have molecules slamming together to form larger and larger molecules, there's going to be exothermic reactions, more than likely. And that energy, th that thermal motion, is going to eject the molecule right off the surface of the asteroid, and nothing will be able to stop it. Therefore, once even a tiny bit of heat is introduced to a system, the thermal motion will more than likely eject any new molecules formed especially on any appreciable scale. This is why if there are any types of molecules that resemble byproducts of life formation or evolution, they were probably preformed and that asteroid is a piece of shrapnel from a previous impact event where life was already located. Container Principle In addition to the mobility, gravity, and volume principles of life formation, the fourth principle is the Container Principle. If the gravitation is not strong enough on the object to hold on to newly formed molecules, then the life which forms would still need to be held back from escaping into interstellar space. And a good example of that would be subsurface, subsurface oceans on an object with a very weak gravitational field. But that being said, I think I made this video long enough. Uh, take it for what you will. If you have any ideas or anything to add to it, go ahead, uh, make a comment below. But uh, this stuff, I don't see establishment mentioning any of this because they're on, they're in their little, little bubble of academia, fantasies, and whatever, whatnot. All right, later, y'all.